Hey guys, what's going on? This is John from Friends Your Benefits. So, little thing I want to share with you. Over the last few months, my youngest daughter, Lily, we've been noticing she's been having some speech issues. So when we brought her to the pediatrician for her annual physical, the pediatrician said, hey John, it's time for Lily to see a speech therapist. So pediatrician gave us a list of certain speech therapists that they recommended, but unfortunately, many of them were fully booked and we had to do a little bit of legwork to find a speech therapist that was a network and also was accepting new patients. So after a little bit of work, we were able to find a speech therapist that fit into our schedule. And Lily's been making some progress. We're not there yet, but we do know that there's many patients out there and many parents who are in similar shoes as us and really need to find a provider that meets their schedule and is also right for their children. I recently came across a new concept in the market called virtual speech therapy. And joining us today to learn more about that, we have Aviva Ben Aharon, founder and clinical director of a company called Great Speech. Hey, Aviva, how's it going? Welcome to the show. Thank you so much, and thank you for sharing about your daughter. I think it's such a great way for uh, members and people to hear about, you know, everybody's personal stories. I think it's so important to share the, these kind of stories. Absolutely. And, you know, luckily Lily's been making some progress. We're not there yet, but we feel that she's on track for kindergarten. So I was really interested to hear about your story, Vivit. Why don't you tell us about how you got actually into speech therapy and how you went about founding the Great Speech Company? Sure. So my family immigrated from um, Israel to the United States when I was 14 years old. And at the time, I didn't speak any English. And I attended a public school with many, many different cultures and languages around me. And it was totally unfamiliar, uncharted territory for me. And I quickly had to learn how to communicate because otherwise I felt very isolated and very separate from my peers. And I think that experience really left a very strong mark for me about the value and importance in being able to communicate regardless of an age. And I've always been drawn to people who are struggling with their ability to communicate. And I think that was one of my my impetus to really develop the the service that we offer today and make it as accessible as it is. In truth, the virtual model that we have um, adapted and taken on um, was very, very new in the field of speech therapy. And in 2009, I had a mom who was lovely and I was working with her son who was very, very involved in a private clinic in person. And she's the one who actually said to me at the time, which was she was so ahead of her time. She shared with me and she said it would be so much easier if we could just do these sessions on the computer and I wouldn't have to bring him in every time to the clinic. And that kind of stayed with me. That idea, that thought was was something that I was keeping in the back of my head. And as I developed professionally and did a lot of research and courses and seminars to try to see what's the best way to deliver this therapy virtually. Um, I finally decided to launch our virtual uh, company in 2014, way before COVID, way before the market space adapted to the virtual um, to the virtual model. And today I'm really proud to say that we are we've been in the forefront. We have been around since 2014 um, and we've grown to a large um, network of providers that are all providing therapy virtually all across the United States. Very interesting. So can you just give our audience just some overview just in terms of what type of speech issues that people may have? I mean, you know, for me, candidly, with my daughter, I mean, she really struggles with R's and saying those sure. sounds a little bit with S's as well. So curious what you typically see. And is it all physical or can it sometimes be behavioral as well? Absolutely. Great question. So, yes, we definitely see kids who are struggling with just producing their sounds correctly. As kids develop their sound system, some kids intuitively learn and know how to pronounce those sounds correctly, like the R and the S and the L. But some kids do have a little bit of a harder time making those R sounding like an R or the S sounding like an S. Um, and that's where speech therapy really does support a lot of the pediatric population that we work with. Um, I would say we see a lot of kids who are learning how to develop language skills, kids who are on the autism spectrum, kids with some learning issues, um, stuttering, kids who have uh, disfluency in their speech. So different speech elements that are more common with, with children. 
but we also see a very large diverse population of adult and el elderly patients, uh, patients who've had a stroke, a traumatic brain injury, uh, cancer of the head and neck, uh, that all impact speech. People with voice issues such as vocal nodules or um, polyps in the vocal cords that impact how they speak. So we really see a very large gamut of uh, communication needs, anywhere from kids that are three and four years old to adults that are in their 90s. So we really see a very large spectrum of communication needs and our team um, has different areas of expertise that really can support these various communication needs. One thing I just want to touch upon, right? So there's been some talk, you know, in the media and you read various articles that COVID actually, one of the unintended consequences, I guess, of the you know lockdowns um, was that children actually fell behind on speech. Is that actually true? Absolutely. And we're definitely seeing an increase of uh, children who are delayed in their speech and language skills. Uh, that could be as a result of just isolation, just not being able to socialize with other peers, um, not having access to therapy, not being in school programs where teachers or pediatricians or a professional might point out and say, you know what, I think your child is a little bit lagging behind developmentally. It might be a good idea to uh, visit with a speech pathologist. Um, so all those definitely impact how kids are uh, diagnosed and identified and then subsequently also then treated um, and supported. So we're definitely seeing a lot of that. Also, at the time when therapy was offered, um, a lot of times you had to work, wear the mask, and that also impacted how kids develop their skills. They need to be able to see the sound, to see you make your sounds in order to learn to make the sounds correctly. So that definitely had its impact. And then we're also seeing a lot of adults who are reporting what we call long COVID uh, issues. So issues with memory, recall, being able to organize their thoughts, having difficulty breathing, difficulty uh, prolonged cough that affects their vocal cords. I mean, there's a lot of issues that could be related to COVID or just uh, you know, byproducts of, of COVID. There's just so much more that we need to learn about it. So walk me through, how does great speech actually work? So you certainly mentioned before, you know, virtual of uh, speech therapy, what have you, right? Is it just like a Zoom recording that we're doing now or how do the logistics of it actually work? Absolutely. So a client reaches out, uh, visits us on the website, greatspeech.com, submits an inquiry. Um, and then we have a team member who reaches out um, gathers some important information, some of it just related to what the concerns are, some of it is more in terms of, you know, insurance or things like that. We collect all that information. And then we have a matching process on our end where we are able to match a client, depending on their needs, their state, their availability to be seen um, with the appropriate provider for them. Uh, we have a large team of clinicians and they're all over the United States, different time zones, different areas, different expertise. Some therapists are working later in the evenings on the weekends. So there's a lot more flexibility in terms of services that are being provided, which I think are key for families, um, as I'm sure you can relate with your own daughter. It's, it's not just about finding the right match for the clinician. It's just making sure that it fits into your lives and fits into the schedules and allows you to be able to pick her up or drop her off or whatever it is that needs to happen. So we really do try to keep it so much easier and, and seamlessly for families. Once the client is matched with that speech language pathologist, then they begin their services and it is done through Zoom, which today most people have access to. Um, we typically have our sessions done on the computer so that there's a bigger screen, we're able to see uh, better and easier. Um, and then the therapist will walk them through activities and, um, and exercises much like they would if they were in person. Um, but again, the convenience factor is huge. So you mentioned before insurance, right? So are there any particular insurance companies that Great Speech actually works with? Yes, we do. We have a very large uh, number of insurance companies. Uh, namely, we work very closely with Cigna. Um, and we really appreciate the fact that Cigna is open to covering uh, virtual services. Um, it's really at the forefront. Um, and then we have other insurance policies and insur insurance plans, different states, uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield of Illinois, uh, Texas, um, in, in Florida, we have insurance companies that we work closely with. So absolutely. And walk me through, let's say someone has insurance that you don't accept. So how does that process work just in terms of, I guess, the person would pay cash then or how does that typically go? 
Yes, yes, we have patients that are cash paying patients that we call direct to consumer patients um, and they do they pay per 30 minute session. Um, typically what we recommend is two sessions a week for 30 minutes um, and during those 30 minutes the therapist will have activities, um, uh, exercises, work that could be used to practice um, in addition to the sessions themselves. So all of that is within that um, uh, program. And then if you are, again, direct to consumer, sometimes clients prefer to buy a package of sessions and then there are incentives to buying that. So there are different, you know, methodology that people um, prefer in terms of how to um, work with their financial um, financially. And then in terms of insurance, sometimes even insurance companies, you can try to, you know, if your insurance company doesn't necessarily cover, there are some single uh, case agreements that, you know, some insurance companies have been really good about uh, allowing their, their members to use our services. So we have really tried as much as possible to help our clients utilize their insurance to cover for services. And I'm sure you allow a uh, payment for HSAs and FSAs, right? If people have to have those, separate ones, yes, right? Absolutely. Yes. And people definitely are using it, especially now towards the middle to the end of the year. They have some money that's, you know, uh, available to them. So that is definitely something that a lot of our members are using. Um, yeah, because it does help to reduce some of the cost um, and ensures that continuity of services. So I want to circle back to children, right? So let's say there's a parent out there and they're watching the video. What's one thing you would want them to know about dealing with the other child who's going through speech issues? So first and foremost, I think it's important to recognize that early intervention or early help makes a huge difference. So in the example of your daughter and the R sound, the earlier these issues are addressed, meaning kindergarten, first grade is the time to address these kind of articulation issues, the better outcome is and the better it is for the kids' uh, self-esteem and their ability to acquire some academic skills. Believe it or not, if a kid is, you know, people sometimes forget the relationship between speaking and reading and writing. So as children are learning to pronounce a word in a certain way, they may be reading it that way or they may be writing it that way. So there's a lot of crossover between all these modalities that are important for outcome, academic outcomes. So really the most important thing to remember is if there is a concern to address it, to reach out to the pediatrician, to find the speech therapist, to have an assessment. Maybe this is not the right time to do the therapy. Maybe the, the professional might say, you know, wait a few months, but I think it's better to reach out to the professional first and get an assessment to determine if therapy is warranted. Um, and if it is, then to address it, because waiting, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to get better on its own. And sometimes there's just bigger consequences then. Absolutely. And then, you know, one additional question, too. So your practice is still accepting new patients, right? That was an issue for me. So, yeah, yeah, there is a definite shortage of speech language pathologists across the United States. And we're definitely, you know, no, we know that that's a very big area um, that we are trying to help. So by in, by ensuring that our team is well uh, well supported and has multiple licenses so in reality a therapist who has a license in florida can then also have a license in north carolina and see clients in north carolina and that allows us to really um, leverage clinical skills of our team members to support a larger population of clients I appreciate that so let's say there's someone out there and they want to learn more about great speech or perhaps they want to connect with you directly where can they go to learn sure. more? So greatspeech.com is our website, and there's tons of great information there. We have blogs. We have um, other information that you'll find very useful. Um, and then you can request a consultation, and that consultation information will be um, set up to meet with a team member who will then um, determine if this is a good fit for our model and support that client, um, and then get the process started from there. Appreciate you coming on the show today and really okay. interesting Thank to see you. how all forms of virtual care continue to grow out there in the marketplace. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for this. Of course. And for audience out there, we want to hear from you. Have you ever tried a form of virtual speech therapy? And if so, what was the overall experience like? Comment below.